Hey, what's going on YouTube? So I finally took my Grendel to the range today and uh, did some load development. And uh, you know, all year long I've been thinking I was going to use these SSTs and you know, have a good hunting season. And I, I changed my mind. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick with these Barnes TTSX. The only other thing that I'm really uh, adamant about potentially using is the Nosler 125 partitions, but I'm still waiting for those to come in the mail. So these are the two powders that I used in my load development. Uh, I really like XBR8208, but I wanted to see what we could do with CFE223. The Barnes load data says that this is supposed to have the highest top end uh, with this lagging about 100 feet per second behind. So what I did is I went right in the middle of the load data, uh, just to bump higher, and I used 26.5 grains of XBR8208, and I used 30 grains of CFE223. Now the max is 27.1, and the max is 31. Um, I really thought at this point in time that CFE223 was still going to outrun the XBR, but I was wrong. So we're going to out the range today. We're going to start some shooting some stuff here. So we're just going to start out with some plain 123 SSTs just to get the gun warm. This is the one that I'm super interested in, actually. Let's do it. Okay, all right, let's do this. The brass looks good, it's not flattened, there's no eject marks, extractor marks, good. 2452 by the way, so that round's smoking. Twenty-four seventeen. I moved a little bit on that one. Twenty-four eleven. I moved a little more than I wanted to on that one. Flyer, yeah, 2401, okay. Oh, bad shot, 2413. I thought it was a bad shot, looks okay. All right, I'll be back. Good thing I recorded what like I was doing because I always forget to shoot the group, like to start the group on my phone, so thank God. All right, here we go. Ooh, 2435. XBR, I heart you. I've always loved you, XBR. Twenty-four forty-one. Twenty-four twenty-seven. I actually scared myself on that shot. I didn't mean to do that. It's not a bad thing, but it's still a good shot. I had a flyer at one point. Twenty-four forty-one. That shit's like super human error. But from what you can see here, I think I'm gonna go with the eighty-two oh eight. You know, I didn't do any ladder test, and that might help me out too. I didn't see any pressure signs, so I can probably come out. It's just the problem is the bolts are so damn expensive, so I really don't want to, you know, spend too much time trying to get a super duper tight load. I mean, this is gonna kill something regardless. 
was also kind of blown away. I wasn't shocked, but the XBR 80 tool weight had a standard deviation of 7.8 and an extreme spread of 21. That is amazing. I mean, that's a really consistent round. Whereas the CFE 223 had a standard deviation of 19.4 and a, uh, an extreme spread of like 40 or 50. I didn't do the math. I forgot to. But, um, you know, I also thought that it, CFE was going to outrun it, but XBR actually outran uh, the, the CFE 223 by like 20 feet per second. Now, maybe if we get on the high end, right, where we're getting close to the max and, and the CFE 223 is compressed, uh, we might actually outrun XBR, but I think just for the sake of it, I'm going to stick with what I've got on the XBR. I mean, that type of a standard deviation in the grouping is really hard to beat. You know, I'm not a super perfectionist. It's sometimes, you know, leave well enough alone. Hey, so let's show you a ballistics table on where we're at with our current loads um, based upon my choice of 8208. Looking at that data, I think I'll be just fine. Anyway, if this saved you time and money and you liked what you saw, please consider liking and subscribing, and I hope to see you in the future. Thanks for stopping by.